And folks, welcome back to another episode of Foul Players Radio. Tonight, I'm with a couple of old friends. Um, Red Die Number 9 has returned to the show. Um, a, about a year or so ago, we had Joe Poodle, our, uh, their singer on the show, just to kind of reminisce and talk about the old days and everything. But since then, they've released a new CD, Ninth Times the Charm. And I got to tell you, you know, this is excellent material, excellent material. And I've enjoyed listening to it since I got my copy and, um, I highly recommend you pick it up folks. And we'll get into that in a bit here. So guys, welcome. It's great to talk to you all again. I'm good. Glad to see you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, you know, tell me about, you know, you have a couple of new folks in the band here, a couple of, you have a brand new rhythm section since, um, earlier incarnations of the band. Uh, so how did, how did this happen? Where did you guys, how did you guys hook up? Well, we, we just kind of like hung around long enough and browbeat them <laughs> into the point where they finally let us in the band. I mean, back in those days when, when you were playing with them with orange seed, um, I was the roadie for stumpy and following stumpy around probably like a, a puppy dog in some people's eyes. So yeah. I guess if you just waited out long enough, um, you know, they run out of options and, and there you get your invite. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. How about you? Uh, it kind of the same thing. Um, yeah. we were introduced to, uh, uh, punk rock and the scene by Larry and Bill and Stumpy and Mark. And, uh, that was a long time ago, but, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's where it all started. And, and we've been friends pretty much ever since. And, mm-hmm. uh, eventually they, uh, Bill and Larry were trying to, uh, get back into playing again and mm-hmm. they were looking for a drummer and, I said I was looking to play drums, so let's see what we can do. And uh, after that, uh, Nick came on, and uh, we've been trying to roll with it ever since. Well, great, great. Um, It's sounding good, you know. Um, I was just telling, um, yeah, I was just you know telling uh, Joe and just Bill here that I uh, my wife has been asking me why it's taking me an extra half hour to get home from the store because I've been driving around the neighborhood cranking it up. you know, running my errands and everything here. And I, like I said, I really enjoy, I, I enjoyed the old stuff too. Yeah. And I remember those days, you know, those were some fun shows back in those days, years ago. And, uh, I always loved that material and this stuff is just great too. So, um, I guess, you know, uh, one, one sad thing is that invisible sound isn't around anymore. So where did you do this one? We did this at a magpie cage with, uh, Jay Robbins. Okay. Uh, He's got a spot down, I don't know what the neighborhood is, below Midtown, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, great room. Um, he shares a spot with Big Crunch um, and uh, Amp people. And um, we, had a, we had a good time there. I mean, he's, he, he's got a great spot, and it was a lot of fun. It was just, and it was fun working with him, too, since we're all big GI fans. It's, it was nice to spend time with him and hear all the old stories, so. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's yeah. There's such a, you know, there, there's such a great history in this area of, um, you know, rock and roll stories and everything. Um, I, that's the reason why I have this podcast really is to kind of talk about that stuff. And, um, a lot of great things happen in this area here, which I'm kind of, kind of try to archive, trying to kind of archive and, you know, have these stories here for people to listen to for years to come and everything. Um, you know, so this is just great stuff here. I see, um, you know, you're, you, uh, you've got some great merch with this too here. I saw some of the t-shirts you guys are wearing, um, you know, Bill, um, you know, you've, I like the, uh, I like the, uh, the cat, the ever ready cat, uh, oh, shirt uh, design that you did yeah. there. And, um, I'm proud to say I did order a Sunoco red dye number nine shirt for myself. So, um, I'm looking forward to getting that in the mail. One of these, (laughs) absolutely, absolutely happy to do so. You know, Um, we're we're experiencing some supply chain issues as well. So as soon as things get sorted out, Mm -hmm. uh, Bill, uh, our, uh, is handling, uh, merchandise on that level. And as Mm -hmm. soon as uh, we get some things sorted out, it, it will be in the mail. I promise. Oh, absolutely. I trust you. Believe me, you know, <laughs> I definitely Somebody trust should. you. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> so this material here, and I was, you know, looking through the liner notes, um, you know, of the previous CD that you did when you did your reunion back in 2010, 2011, around that time. Um, and it, you know, you had said in there that you had had, um, 
if I read it correctly, a, a CD of unreleased material yet. Was any of this that? Nope. No, we had, no. uh, we had gone into the studio. We'd gone into invisible. Mm-hmm. Bill Stumpy had a, a whole bunch of music. Um, and we laid it down, but we never really got around to finishing it up. And, um, mm. uh, I think we, after that yeah yep so that stuff is still out there and not released yet huh no, <laughs> no. Not, not, none of it none of it has been released um love letter was one of the th- songs that we did you you get it on the live version of our um our complete uh number nine release yeah. Uh, but it was never released, you know, from the studio. We actually recorded it in yeah. the studio, but we didn't put it out. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was that, well, several others. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they, they really had a good run there. Um, you know, they you know, I, I, when we were there, and I'm sure that was when you guys were there too, it was in Joe's basement. Yes. Up on, I think up in um Hamilton, I guess is that neighborhood up in that, uh that's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's where we met them and everything. And, um, they just loved you guys. I got to tell you, you know, um, when we would go over there, you know, and you know how Dave and Joe are talkers, um, yeah. you know, and, um, they, they were, I'll tell you, you guys were, they, they were proud of you guys. They were definitely proud of what you were doing and proud to be part of, you know, working with you, recording you, producing it and everything. Um, and, and they told us all the time. You know, we would be in the studio and they were like, you know, you know, Bill, you know, he's always, uh, over at Towson state and he's covering that place with flyers and he's, you know, getting girls to the show and getting all these people there. You guys ought to be doing that too. You know, <laughs> they're, they're like, you know, that Bill Tavik, I tell you, he's something else. He's, he's promoting, he's a hell of a promoter. And they were just singing your praises. Like they were in church, man, you know, yeah. Bill Tavik, Bill Tavik, finally, we were on the clock, you know, and, um, they were saying, you know, Bill Tavik did this, Bill Tavik did that. Finally, our drummer, Sean, just looks at their guys. He goes, man, fuck Bill Tavik. (laughs) (laughs) And then then (laughs) Joe and Dave, they were sitting at the console. It was as if the proverbial record scratch, you know, those guys stopped, did a complete 180 flip spun around in their chairs. They're looking at Sean with daggers in their eyes. Like they're getting ready to <laughs> kill him. And then they're like, what? And then Sean goes, no, I meant fucking a Bill Tavik. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to put better. that on a t-shirt. Fucking a Bill Tavik. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. But, um, you know, that was a, uh, th- those were some great times back in those days, you know, um, it, it, you know, the way it was back in the, I mean, to get people to your shows, I mean, nowadays, what do you, you you click it on Facebook and it's out there. And one thing that I've always said, and I'm, I know you guys did it too. You know, you went out face to face and you handed people flyers, you know, flyers everywhere. You did. We just, we just went nuts. We were lucky the, you know, our, our roommate, Andrew worked at Kinko's overnight. Oh, nice. He did everybody's flyers uh, and he would, he would design (laughs) ours. And we're like, Hey, here's the date. Here's the club, you know, try not to offend too many people (laughs) print, whatever you want. We don't care. And, uh, and then we would just put them everywhere, but that that's what you did back then. You know, Mm -hmm. that was, you know, that, that was, it's the only way to get it out. You know, that's you, not everybody was going to one spot. So. Oh yeah. We were lucky that we were, we were in Towson too, because that was sort of the hub. And, uh, you know, you can put flyers all over Towson state and, you know, get a fair chunk of people to show up. So, yeah, yeah. I, I remember, um, and there was a huge crowd, you know, that, that was the kind of the people that went to Towson were the kind of people that would follow you, you know, they were into that type of music and everything. And, um, you guys did well out there. I mean, you played it a lot of number of places around Towson too. Um, I think, um, wasn't your the live album that you did 
recorded there too in Towson? Was it at Schaefer's or am I wrong? Uh, that was Hopkins, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we, we actually did do uh, Schaefer's was um, sweet. Um, uh, what was it? What was the song that we played? Yeah. Yeah, we covered Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We busted out the weirdest covers. But yeah, mm-hmm. we uh, we we did Schaefer's a couple times. We did, that was a really nice show at Hopkins. It was one of those, I don't know, there was like five bands. And I, mm-hmm. I think we might have gone on last. And that was that was a couple hundred people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think you two, Brian and Nick, I think you were probably in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you're probably, you can probably, you're on the cover of the from that picture looking into the crowd but yeah i mean we play anywhere and uh towson's a college town so there were a lot of places to play but mm-hmm. you know we, we played down in the city too whenever we could we took any gig we could get yeah yeah and there was plenty of places to play back then too you know um plenty of places around the play you know there was you know i mean you could just name a million of them you know maxwell's i remember you know we did the rage we were like we were like, you know, we were to the rage what Norm was to Cheers. <laughs> After a while. Yeah, I saw yeah. you a couple times at the rage. Oh, yeah. those yeah. those steps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's how you you, you you want to talk about steps. Did you guys ever do the Paragon? No, I don't no. think so. That was no. in College Park, and I tell you yeah. what, you you want to talk about the stairs to hell. I mean, these things were. <laughs> I mean, it was just and you know lugging you know, an SVT head up there and everything was just back in those days, how they made them in those days, you know, um, I'll tell you, it's always the bass player. Yeah. Yeah. And the drummer (laughs) too, you know, lugging his stuff up those stairs and everything. Um, yeah, but, um, you know, and, and you guys had mentioned too, you know, that this was kind of a time where, a lot of the genres of music you're kind of coming together. You had mentioned that you ended up on a lot of bills with mystic force and you'd seem like you didn't quite get it <laughs> as to you know, why, you know, um, go ahead. We- but I think people thought we were, we had a little more of a metal sound than I think we thought we did. I mean, yeah, Bill was, yeah. Bill was playing like the classic metal rig, the Kramer mm-hmm. focus through the Marshall JCM 800. Oh yeah. Full stack of, you know, four by twelves. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there is a kind of a a metal, a metal sound, a metal tone to it, but we didn't think we were real. We were metal, but, but it was still like the height of hair metal. Yeah. So there were a ton of those bands around too. And so, you know, I guess they were trying to, I don't know. I mean, I guess in retrospect, we should consider ourselves lucky. We got the, we got the gigs at all. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So, but yeah, it just, it just seemed weird to us. But then again, but we ended up on the bill with uh, Disappear Fear, which were, <laughs> yeah. you know, two girls oh, doing yeah. acoustic. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I was like, well, this is kind of a weird, a weird bill to be on too, you know, because mm-hmm. we, they, everybody was sitting on the floor when they were playing. And then we come out and, you know, I mean, we're, we got half a load on and, and we're just like, blowing shit up i mean we just, we're just <laughs> yeah. trying to trying to cause as much as much violence and mayhem as possible and i was like i don't know if they're really down for this yeah yeah well th- that was the way it was with us too because we ended up getting booked with like a couple of leonard skinner bands Ooh. um <laughs> and um especially like the, did you ever you remember the midway cafe in essex oh, yeah yeah we played yeah. there with one of those and i'll tell you what you know I, I know now that why there are reasons for chicken wire, because we sure <laughs> as hell could have used some that night. Damn. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, I mean, you know, you, you hope you get, you, 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 you don't want to turn down gigs cause it's money in your pocket, but man, mm-hmm. you, you hope the booker has a plan, you know, and isn't just throwing stuff together. Right, right, right. Yeah, not just band with band. You're kind of listening and kind of getting the genres together. And yeah, you know, it's like hey, I, I heard these guys have a bit of a following, and it's like you you know that this is not the kind of music your people want to hear. Yeah, so, I know. So, yeah, that was there were some there were some rough goes back then. That's for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. We we got books somewhere. Like, you know, make sure you guys play plenty of stuff we can dance to. 
All right. <laughs> People still ask me that. They're like, oh, you're in a band. I'm like, yeah, the band's doing real well. And, and they're like, well, would you want to play, mm-hmm. you know, the, uh, our party? And I was like, lady, this is not for you. Yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's not for you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I, yeah. I don't I don't want to I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to offend anybody, but there's a limit and this is not it. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. no, we're not playing anybody's party. Right. Or you know anybody's mm. restaurant, it's like it's not going to happen. <laughs> going to happen. We're going to be leaving with the fixture. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, this is, not, <laughs> this is not the way to go. Right, right, right. Well, that that's the thing, you know, just because you know we're doing original material, you know, and you know that that's you know, you know weddings or uh, <laughs> weddings, bar mitzvahs, anything. Unless the kid wants it for those bar mitzvah, I guess it's that kid's day. But you know. Well, um, other than that i can't see uh <laughs> instead instead of the cross you guys gonna bring out the star of david or something you know right that, exactly is, yeah 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 we were hang- a nice touch for you yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> that hang nice that touch. on the star of david there we yeah. go that would have been a good one <laughs> yeah. Mazel tov, Jacob. <laughs> exactly Today you're a man <laughs> <laughs> oh god could you imagine oh uh, yeah yeah nobody nobody thinks about that you gotta see the long game yeah, right <laughs> right it's right. like oh what a great idea i'm like no man there's gonna be a dude hanging off a of star david you do not want this <laughs> there's a there's a bad movie there's a bad movie in this line of thought there's a really, really is movie. where's mel brooks i know a copy of this <laughs> i want a writing credit yeah exactly exactly i know <laughs> Oh man. Oh geez. But, um, yeah, there were some great times in those days and, um, it, it's, I mean, have you guys been getting out at all with this material and, you know, with this lineup? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> you know. Larry, you got quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> this, is, this is where Larry like, should be answering again. Get, mm-hmm. Getting out? What? Who know? I, no, I figured you two had pretty strong opinions about this. I was going to let you guys take it. <laughs> well, we didn't want to throw you under the bus immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wasn't even going to go there. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, we want to. Um, you know, we were just all in record mode for a while. And then yeah. I live outside of Philly, Larry's mm. in Harrisburg. So, I mean, we've got lives and we try and practice weekly, but sometimes it's every week, sometimes it's once a month. So yeah, yeah, that doesn't necessarily lend itself to having the tightest thing. And, and none of us want to put this out there without the feeling that we're just going to be just as tight as everybody remembers the band. So uh, certainly it's on the horizon, you know, it's probably a 2022 thing, but uh we're mm-hmm. thinking about it. We're planning for it. So it, it's eventually going to happen. Mm-hmm. Instead of but clubs, I mean, was would, would you like maybe do like festivals or something like that? Like, I think the last time you, know, you did like the Hamden Fest or something, or was it Hunfest or was it Hunfest? Uh, Hamden yeah, Festival. We, yeah. Yeah, you did the festival. Yeah. Um, I, I know what my feelings are. Um, I, I, I really want to, you know, after playing so many weird cruddy bar gigs mm-hmm. in the past and you know people's backyards and stuff just to oh, have sure, a gig. Yeah. I, I really would just rather play clubs or any kind of venue that that people want to see what yeah. we're putting out there. You know, right, more of right. a, a punk or metal centric type of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, um I mean hey I I I, I don't begrudge the descendants or bad religion or anybody for playing like 50,000 person punk in Vegas festivals, you know, Mm -hmm. they got, they, they, they've earned it, you know, and they, this is how they make a living, but Mm -hmm. I don't, I just don't think that's punk rock. Right. 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 I I would just rather, I mean, I'd rather play some dude's living room. who has got 20 people that are losing their minds. (laughs) <laughs> needless uh, to say if we get an invite for a fifty thousand person festival we're not turning that down right 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 <laughs> right, right we just know that's not coming anytime soon sure. yeah i can say that we framed it in the punk rock mindset <laughs> i yeah i can say that but no i mean i, I yeah i really i really want would like to focus on gigs that are for people who are interested in, in the kind of music we do and not just 
making the scene or right, because, right, right. You know, or because somebody else they like is there and they don't, mm-hmm. they don't really care. Right. Um, yeah. So I, you know, but yeah, ideally, I mean, we'll see. I don't you know. Mm-hmm. After this all comes together, we'll see what's left. I guess. But yeah, yeah, you know, that's true too. But you know, places like the Auto Bar, that place is always dynamite, and they were great to us when yeah, we said yeah. we wanted to come back. So you know, they they tell us play on a Tuesday at noon, and you know we're we're going to show up. Mm-hmm. Right, right. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Fifty thousand seat uh, stadium and <laughs> the Auto Bar Tuesday at noon are the two gigs we will not turn down. Right, 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 <laughs> right. But the thing is, I, and I, I I totally understand where you are with that because. Um, you you guys were established. You had a good following around here. You know, I mean, you know, whenever I went to the shows, they were a hell of a lot of fun. You had a lot of people there. And I think you know, when you did that reunion, you know, about 10 years ago, you drew a lot of people to that people remembered. And, and I, and I think, you know, you, you can be choosy with what you take. You know, but I, but you know, that, that would be good, you know, but I would say, you know, instead of going out and pounding the pavement on, you know, on a Tuesday night show, you know, in some bar where nobody's going to be and going that route again, I mean, I think, you know, the festivals, you know, you know, music festivals that are around, um, you know, things like Hamden Fest would be a good show for you or, you know, auto bar, like you'd mentioned, you know, you know, being a little more choosy, I think would be good. So yeah, yeah. Well, well, hopefully we'll get a chance to see you again, you know, um, you know, out if, if it's, you know, the right show for you. Sure. Sure. How about, um, you, you know, you doing that. Have you been, um, you know, you know, shopping the disc around for any airplay or anything or, um, anything like that, submitting it to, uh, anybody for, you know, to get heard. Yeah, we've um, we've pushed it out a little bit. Um, I know uh, we've sent it to a couple labels, um, and well, I mean, you know, we we anybody who's got a, a something like this, like what you're doing, mm-hmm. um, and um, also I, we uh, we got some airplay up at um, what are, what's the what are the call letters? It's the Delaware station. We I sent it to our old friend Rod Mizey, and he uh, he played us. Mm-hmm. a couple weekends which was nice um and then you know people who are doing like internet stuff mm-hmm. sent it to them and and you know got a decent response um it's tough i mean you know we we've got some other stuff we need to do yeah but yeah. uh you know we, we we've been out of the game for for a minute and it's like wow how's this how's this work we're kind of relying yeah. on on nick uh as the tech savvy one to you know <laughs> sort of lead the charge and since brian's uh kids won't you know help us out or you know <laughs> do anything for us with their instagram yeah. like man mm-hmm. all right so yeah we're kind of turning it over to nick and open for the best mm-hmm. it's weird yeah right. it's, it's kind of a, a figure it out kind of thing I, I think you know the way we went into the first recording it probably wasn't as planned out as we wanted it to be but you mm-hmm. know i think we kind of wanted to put something out there and had a, a semi idea of what we wanted to do but yeah the next push you know we're going to be a little bit more formulaic in it and, and really plan it out and and try and look at those venues that we can go through to kind of push it out there a little bit better but you know mm-hmm. being here is as larry said it, it, it's great and we've got some contacts so we'll get better as as we go and we'll uh we'll figure it out i think right 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 um, it'll help once we can gig too i mean you know, yeah that that's going to be a big I think that's going to be a big thing is actually being able to get out, mm-hmm. um, you know, unless we're going to go make TikTok videos in Brian's basement. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I don't know how else you get out in the modern world, but uh, yeah. So fingers crossed, you know, mm-hmm. if our, if our, we can keep our collective social anxiety together, we'll, uh, you know, we'll get out <laughs> on the road and, and do mm-hmm. some stuff. Right. Right. And that, and the thing is too, is that, um, you know, having getting out doing what I'm doing now, you know, murder mysteries and acting, um, it, it is still a different ball game yet. You know, the crowds <laughs> haven't quite returned to the level where they were before, um, in, in a lot of ways, you know, some people are just still nervous about going out. You know, it's not so much that you can't have the shows, but people are still a bit nervous about going out. But I, I honestly think, that, and I've said this a million times on the show, you know, um, I honestly think, you know, once this is a little more behind us and people are a little more confident to go out, I guess, once we've reached that 
specific number of vaccinations that we're supposed to have for community herd herd immunity. immunity herd immunity i think people are going to be a little more willing you know to risk going out and um i think we're going to have a renaissance i mean cuz people have been going back to the drawing board during this time i know i have with the shows that i do And um, there's going to be all kinds of material, whether it be books, albums, plays, television shows, movies. I think we're going to be in another renaissance, you know, once things level, you know, get a little more stable, you know. I hope. I mean, you know, I I know we had, you know, we had a lot of free time on our hands and I imagine everybody did. So Mm -hmm. I'm really surprised everybody didn't put a record out in the last, you know, eight months. I mean, what Mm -hmm. else were you doing? You know, right. I, I imagine though some of the touring bands were like, we got to pay rent. And so mm-hmm. we can't afford the studio. Um, I know uh, Eddie Spaghetti, I follow him and, and from the Super Suckers. And he was doing all sorts of stuff online in his house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, looking to, looking to generate a little income because, mm-hmm. you know, there's a dude that plays like 220 dates a year or something, you know, and, you know, mm-hmm. that's his livelihood. We're lucky that, you know, I mean, well, we're not dilettantes, but this is an, a, you know, an expensive hobby. We love doing it, mm-hmm. but we, we don't live off of this, thankfully, or we screwed. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I think that, that uh, a, a lot of people got creative in mm-hmm. the last, you know, 18 months, and, and hopefully it all comes back now. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, if, if people would just like, hey, yeah, we'll get vaccinated and wear a mask and stand and look at a stage for an hour you know mm-hmm. i mean i think we'd be a little further along you know right. it would help if yes. everybody got on the same page and like you know just did their part then we'd all be out you know? i know i know um yeah it, it's been a little frustrating lately just because um uh, you know i mean coming out of covid and i can kind of speak for myself you know we've had you know a number of shows canceled just because you know again you know people are still nervous about covid um you know, and everything like that. But um, I am optimistic that we have had quite a few not cancel and they've been getting bigger and bigger. So um, I think we're on the way yet, but, you know, maybe the light at the end of the tunnel may be that big or getting bigger, but we're not quite where the train is yet. So uh, we're the end. <laughs> yeah. It's not a train, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I'm in the business mm-hmm. and I was talking to somebody uh, out West last week and, uh, she was not optimistic. And if anybody's going to know, it's going to be, it's going to be her. So uh, I don't know, man, don't, don't sell your stock in masks uh, yeah. yet because it's, we still got ways to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so, but yeah, I mean, like I said, if, if you, you, you know, it, it, the precautions, if you just follow them, um, you know, things will go a lot smoother, a lot faster. I mean, we can all be out doing our thing. But, you know, Brian will tell you, he went to that, that metal show and nobody's wearing a mask. I'm like, Mm -hmm. that's just not, that's just not smart. You know? Yeah. 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 If if everybody was there wearing a mask, you know, science Mm -hmm. tells you, you know, you're going to reduce the the chance of problems. So why not just do it? But, you know, freedom, man. Mm -hmm. Freedom. Well, yeah. Like I said, I I was like, you know, I got my first two Pfizer's and I got my booster. Oh, um, man. yeah, I, I, as soon as I possibly could, you know, I was like, I'm not messing with this, you know? And, um, yeah, I, I just don't understand. There's just so much, um, I'm, I'm surprised at a lot of people, honestly, and I hate to say that, but I'm just surprised at what I'm hearing, you know, with a lot of people with this stuff. And, um, I just don't get it. You know, um, I really don't, you know, it's just, it's just, um, just an odd thing, you know, with some of this, but I've, you know, we'll get off that. Um, so, um, you know, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm seeing, uh, pictures, you playing some guitar there. Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. I do that now. Don't I? Yeah. I do do that now. Oh, there's Mm -hmm. proof of that. (laughs) Yeah. Well, yeah, not, not that you would notice from listening. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, it's, it's it, I wanted to, to learn because for years I've been tell, telling Bill and Stumpy and, 
you know, I'm like, Hey, that's good. Hey, that's not good, but I don't know why. Mm -hmm. And I could never make a suggestion to make it better. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm like, well, then I need to learn the language. So I started playing some guitar and, uh, and then I was like, Oh, now I can finally like communicate with Mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah. And, um, so that's helped, but also, you know, after that reunion show, I had to have knee surgery again. Um, and then I had it as soon as I moved up here, I had it again. So I'm on my third one Mm. and, uh, yeah, that jumping around thing that ain't happening anymore. So <laughs> I didn't want to just stand there looking like an idiot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I figured I will try and uh, contribute. And uh, so yeah, I'm playing a little rhythm guitar and mm-hmm. trying to sing. And I don't know, it's 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 a progress. It's, it's a process. Aren't knees fun? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> just fuse it, you know. I, mm. I, I went to get out of Bill's truck and I almost, I, I was almost dead. I just mm. slid out of this monster truck he has. Mm. And I was like, oh, dear God, I hit the pavement. I was like, mm. my knees. I'm like, oh, this is not the way to go. Right. So, yeah, I'm not getting in that truck anytime soon again. Mm-hmm. Too, too, too high. But yeah, now I just can't. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I mean, you know, I, Bill and I are 55. I mean, this yeah. is, yeah, there's, I mean, Iggy Pop. God bless him. He got on the heroin early, I guess, and he's well preserved. <laughs> but uh, it's too late for me to start, and I'm. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh man. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm not. I'm maybe. I'm just a year or two behind you guys, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah. My knees are. Yeah. I hear you. I'm. I'm, I'm with you on the knees. That's yeah, just. Well, a, yeah. My knee, and then Brian's arm, and then. <laughs> Bill, Bill's got a thing. I don't know. Nick seems to be the only like. Oh, Nick, Nick and his foot. Yeah, we got some things, man. <laughs> oh man, we're, we're going through some stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's. Uh. I know. And we all do. We all do. You know. Yeah. Um. Yep. So, Bill, I see. Um. You know, you've been playing. The last time I saw you, you had a really nice Les Paul. You were playing. I was kind of. I kind of missed the Kramer. You still yeah. have that. I still got the Kramer. Mm-hmm. I didn't let it go. I just. But Les Paul gives me that um, that bigger sound. Um, yeah. It gives me the uh, and the Kramer was a, a one thousand focus, so it only had the back pickup. Yeah, yeah. So it only got the rhythm. It didn't get the clean or strike that. It got the clean sound. It didn't get the rhythm sound. Mm-hmm. And the Les Paul gives me both, and you can put it right in the middle. Yeah, and you get this nice fat freaking sound that you just can't get with anything else and i put invaders in there um these these pickups are just like they just grab the sound with you barely have to pick Mm. to for it to 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 grab it It, it's just they're so sweet they're fat and it's a really great sound Mm. yeah i bet it it was i mean i you know, the last time I heard you, it was excellent. You know, it was excellent and, um, it, definitely a good sound. Definitely a good sound. Are you still playing the, uh, the amp with the uh, Vietnamese guy on it? Yeah. 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 I've got, I've got one. Larry now has the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, I bought a, uh, line six slant cabinet, um, to, uh, put a little sound upwards as mm-hmm. opposed to down just flat on a square cabinet. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, I've got both of them, um, and they're, they're still in commission. So don't you have a couple at home too? What's that again? Don't you have a couple at home too? I, yeah, I got a couple uh, speakers at home, but, uh, you know, they're, they're not going to find a cabinet. He's got the history of modern amplification in his basement. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, invisible sound did too. Good Lord. You remember that wow. place? Wow. Oh, I, uh, that was fun. I saw the list of things they were selling when mm-hmm. they closed up and I was like, wow. But yeah, that none of that was anywhere close to my price range. I'm like, man, I'd love to have one of those, but yeah, no, they, mm-hmm. they really did have, it's just amazing. But I'm starting to, I'm starting to feel like every studio mm-hmm. has a collection of, of cool vintage stuff. Oh that yeah. They, that that mm-hmm. you can play through. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but, but Jay, Jay had some very interesting things, but I, I think that invisible at the end just had a, anything you could possibly want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they, they just had it all. They did. And he, even when it came to, um, I mean, because they did, you know, when we recorded there, you know, we did a couple of, uh, things that, um, you know, Dave and Joe pulled out and they're like, Oh, wait a minute. I know what the perfect thing is we can do here. And they're like, you know, going through their, you know, these boxes and everything. And they pull out this old, this microphone that had to be like maybe the second microphone ever created. And <laughs> they had Nat <laughs> sing through it. And, um, you know, just to add some backing vocals in one of our songs and everything. And, um, yeah, it was just amazing. It, it's just a real shame, you know, that, you know, they ended up being kind of a casualty of all this, you know, ability to do home recording and everything like that, because I mean, they were just, you know, it, it was a great place to learn. I think I was, I consider ourselves fortunate when we were young to be able to work with those guys. And I'm sure you guys probably agree because they were just so knowledgeable, you know, both yeah. of them, you know, Dave yeah. and Joe, you know, well, uh, you, you guys recorded there with Frottage, right? You did your, yeah. you did your, your Oh, okay. Yeah. Your, your did, yeah. Band. And speaking of that, like, uh, when the, we had an intro to a song and I, I kept bending a note and finally, I, I think it was Dave or Joe was like, no, I got an idea to your point. He pulls out this piccolo bass. So I, I overplayed, I, I laid a track over it in a piccolo bass for this intro bass line that we had. So I mm-hmm. still remember him doing that, but yeah, I, we love the experience that we had with him and we still actually talk about when we record again, you know, should we connect with Dave and whatever he's doing now and kind of get the, get the team back together? Yeah. I tell you, he, they're just, you know, super knowledgeable and everything. And, um, not much they don't know about, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, great gear and everything, um, you know, and, um, you know, my old bandmates, you know, continued to record there, you know, and they did 20 ripped angel and everything, Sean and Fritz did after that. And, um, really got some good stuff out of there. It's just a shame. They were, there was just such a good quality studio. Um, cause you know, also, you know, Stumpy went on to last picture show. They were customers there. Um, and then if you remember fit of frustration, another band yeah. played there, you to, know, we used to practice in fits, uh, in fits house. In yeah. Hamilton. Yeah. It, yeah. It was a shit. We just lost Dom a couple of years ago, uh, yeah, which was a real shame. Yeah. Yeah. He was a Calvert hall boy with me. I, he went to school. He and I were together in school and, um, okay. yeah, that was a real shame. That was a real shame. Cause we, we played a number of shows with them too. And, um, always had a good time, always had a good time with those guys. It's just a real yeah. shame. These things happen. Um, you know, that that's just, um, I, I've had a number of folks on and they just really kind of agree that those days that when we were playing it back in those days were just really a magical time. I mean, there was just so many bands out there, so many to see, um, do you guys have any particular shows or any memories, um, of those days you'd want to you know, share any particular shows that stick out to you? Oh, wow. <laughs> don't, don't all go at once. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'll, 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 I'll jump in. I, I think the one I remember is, um, I guess it was Maxwell's. Is that the one that was on like uh, right off of um, 90 Herring. or right off of 695? Yeah. Um, yeah. That was the first time I ever had Jägermeister. And I, I was, was just thinking like, about that. I was probably like 14, maybe 15 years old. Oh, so my parents, my parents would let me go roadie like midweek during high school. But I was the first time I ever had Jägermeister. And I, I don't know if that show was midweek, but yeah, I, I remember Jägermeister in the talk. Oh, it's got deer blood in it. And <laughs> that, that, I mean, that was necessarily the show, but the, 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 just surrounding the, the show. what you were drinking in the, what you're drinking backstage. <laughs> do yeah, you, I was, do I was you just remember thinking who I'm played like, the show, Nick? <laughs> I was I'll thinking red dying thing. though. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh yeah, but then I, I'm like, oh, do I remember all our shows from what we were drinking? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's that's not so good. But uh, yeah, I was I was totally thinking about that. But, um, I don't know. Uh, worst show, maybe Mount Carmel High School. <laughs> uh, we played there too. Yeah. yeah, that was a that was a classic booking blunder. But again, what did we know? Um, yeah, it's one of those. It's like, ooh, sorry, we ruined your high school dance, kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I chased the nun down the hallway. Remember? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, we had we had skinheads that showed up, and I said, 
this is way out of control. You you got to get the police here. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, what do I mean? Uh, They're going to burn your school the down. Here. There's there are skinheads here and we are not a skinhead band. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to be cool. And she uh, eventually called the police and they came and uh, we didn't have any major bloodshed, but it, it was, oh my God, what a nightmare. Mm. That, show yeah, that, that wasn't so good. Um, maybe best show was like one of our last ones. We rented out uh, the Towson Armory. Mm -hmm. hey, that's what, that was I, one I was thinking of. That was a great show. I don't even remember like what prompted us to do it or who did it. I, I assume we got it. We went into it with one of the other bands. I don't even know if they would even do something like that these days, but we're like, Hey, we're going to do, do a thing. And it's going to be this night. It's going to be three hours. And, and it, the place was packed. Yeah. I was, was there. I, was, I went to that. Yeah. That was a good one. And I, and again, now I was drinking, I think Jägermeister out of somebody's trunk <laughs> on the street <laughs> with Chris well, Stankus, which is kind of like, <laughs> roaming around killing time before we went on i'm like man mm -hmm. this is weird wasn't there uh, a show downtown it was like new year's eve i don't know it was like D like studio 10 or like someplace like yes well, that was a good show that's the one that's the one where dax stage did a stage dive and they parted the lake and there's a there's it's awesome our buddy chris who took right. pictures there's a shot i was on stage i think there's a shot of me and larry with the, it was like just mouth like a gape because that was when he jumped and the, and everybody just went like this and we're just like <laughs> and chris <laughs> captured that moment i've seen that picture from time to time but that mm. was a pretty good show yeah that happened to stumpy once too we played a gig at umbc with i think phlegm and i can't remember who else and it was like in their lunchroom or something and we're on one of those stages that's just like pieced together so it separates at random times you're mm -hmm. jumping around on it and at some point stumpy I don't, I don't think it was during our set but it was like during the next fan set he went off the stage and just like that was it he's just he was down and he's bleeding and i'm like oh lord <laughs> what's going on here um yeah I, I i don't he yeah that was a rough night for him as a mm -hmm. decent show apparently my wife was there because uh, yeah. she was going to UMBC at the time, but she was there to see one of the dudes in the other band. <laughs> I don't even think she <laughs> stayed for us. So, you know, <laughs> her loss, I guess. Yeah. That's why she had to wait so long for me to ask her to marry her again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You, 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 you wait, you wait for red dye number nine, young lady. You don't just, That's you know, right. no you, cutting corners you, around here. You're not going to have that. All right. <laughs> you'll, you'll regret it. 40 years later, you'll regret it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we, we pissed off now. Remember, uh, that was Andrew. That wasn't Andrew. our fault. Yeah. That, uh, our, our, our flyer guru, Andrew printed up a flyer with a damn near half naked woman on a telephone saying, yeah, I can't wait till Red Eye number nine plays here. And then we got now out front of Schaefer's pub, you know. Wow. With, with banners and everything saying, don't come to this show, blah, blah, blah. They're, you know, the sexist. And I was like, oh, dear God. Yeah, we, that's when you give somebody too much leeway. That's exactly right. <laughs> Our review process wasn't as stringent as it is now. But yeah, he basically <laughs> he basically tore apart a, a hustler that he found in the sofa and <laughs> and pasted all the pictures on a flyer, put our name in the show and hmm. <laughs> posted them all. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Um, hmm. I, you know, good crowd. Probably not the, in retrospect, the, the best thing to do, uh, you know, but. Hmm. Living now, can, now can, the National Organization for Women's, like some chapter of them, came out to protest the show over that. With all the hair bands that were out there, with all that scantily clad, you know, you know, women and everything up on stage dancing, they come after you, yeah. of all people. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, you know, yeah. well, Bill yeah. would just handed the wrong person a flyer on on campus. More, That's what happened. That, yeah, that, more, more more than skip that one woman, Bill. We'd have been okay. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm. I know. Yeah. Well, now we know. 
Yeah, good grief. Oh, now we man. know. <laughs> Again, more <laughs> more stringent review process these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But um, but I tell you what, you know, I, I wish we could kind of go back to those days when you know giving out flyers and getting to meet people and everything. That was part of the fun of playing. I thought, you know, um, going around and posting them everywhere you could find, you know, giving them to people and. You, know, you really, you know, I mean, you got to meet your audience back in those days. It was even better when they would actually show up for the show instead of throwing your flyer in the trash. You know? <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, yeah, no, it was, you know, we got to meet a lot of great people, mm-hmm. um, you know, and we, we, you know, thanks to the modern technology, we keep in touch with a whole bunch of them too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that reunion show we did was awesome. It really brought like the extended family. Oh, back yeah. together i mm-hmm. mean every you know uh, uh, babysitters must have made a freaking fortune that weekend because oh yeah you know every everybody needed uh needed one for the kids so they could have that one night out but mm-hmm. yeah it was just great seeing everybody um yeah i just I, and it's so many surprises too like cats from the old neighborhood that i haven't seen since you know like high school or before high school um yeah it was just it, it was cool and it, it's it's a shame that we don't have that anymore, but you know, times change now. You, like I said, I, I wouldn't be able to talk to half of these people with the regularity that I have now mm-hmm. if we didn't have the technology and, and things. So yeah, yeah, like, you know, the hammer jacks ain't ever coming back. I don't care who has bought what and is building it. That, that, that time is past, but you know, the, mm-hmm. the vibe is still, is still there. You just gotta, you know, yeah, you yeah. gotta experience it a different way. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, but um, yeah, that I had a hell of a good time at your reunion show. Um, that time that that was just that was just great. It was a shame I was upset I couldn't make it to uh, the uh, Hamden Fest, but I did go to the Auto Bar, and I will tell you that was awesome. I think you I posted didn't. on, uh, <laughs> I think I posted on Facebook after that. Um, I said I just went to a Red Die Number Nine show. I just had lunch at Geno's because they were just opening up the Geno's <laughs> again back then. And I said that I looked in the mirror and I'm still 42. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have changed and nothing else has. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm a but, big fan of Geno's. That's for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There's still a couple of those lasted, you know, um, there was yeah. like a bunch of them that they, they kind of came out and they were g- kind of like gangbusters, but they've kind of scaled it back a little yeah. bit. Hey, I like it. You know, actually the first, right after the reunion show, I think the first time I, I sat down with you was at the Geno's. In town. Is that, yeah, yeah, exactly. We got Ex- together talking about this. Exactly. Yeah. That was yeah. the day. Yeah. That was the day uh, when I was working on that other podcast and there, uh, you know, the guy who owned the laptop and knew how to do this stuff stood us up. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Oh that's God, right. that was uh, that was embarrassing. Well, you know, Geno's was good though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We did, we did have that. Yeah, I know, I know. Did um, so um, you know, you've got uh, this here. Um, this album is great. You know, uh, where you have a website and you had a uh, was it a Bandcamp site or a? Yep. Yeah, yeah tell got, us. We got a uh, red die number nine dot com. Um, Bandcamp is, I think, it's just backslash red die number nine. Instagram, Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find all the new stuff that we've released so far on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, um, and 10 other streaming sites that I d- wouldn't even begin to tell you what they're called. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got <laughs> our next single is coming out on, uh, which will now affectionately be known as Red Friday, uh, mm-hmm. the day after Thanksgiving. Um, nice. We'll have one more song following that, and then we're just in the lab working on new stuff. So, uh, Oh, great stuff. Uh, so yeah, a couple more songs to come out a release. Um, once we release all those, then we'll actually do a full digital CD release. Mm. Um, we did the hard copy first and we've been doing singles. So, um, there's a, a semi plan that's put together. It'll probably be a little bit more buttoned up next time, but, uh, mm-hmm. we're working on it. Yeah. Yeah. That's- if you go to red die number nine.com, I think you can link to the band camp, which is yeah. handling mm-hmm. all the merch, like all the hard merch. Yeah. Um, so you can get your shirts there, but yeah, just go to red die number nine.com and, uh, it'll take you where you need to go. Okay. Yep. And, and you still have the old stuff on there too, right? You yes, can get do. the, uh, yeah, you can get the old, uh, the, uh, the greatest hits CD yep. and, uh, mm-hmm. and the, uh, the original, uh, um, deer Complete. hunter shirt. Yeah. 
Okay. Get all that on there too. Yeah. And, I, uh, I, if, if there's something that you see that, that you want, you don't see, just reach out to us. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll yeah. dig through some drawers and find it, or we'll, we'll cook it up for you special. I mean, we're flexible. Yeah. We, we're, here, we, we're here for the fans. When, when we met up that time, uh, uh, Joe, we, uh, you gave me, you know, a couple of the CDs and, uh, you gave me some of the old 45s that you had the one on the red vinyl, a couple of those. I tell you what, um, a while after that, when I started this podcast, I had Sue Hodges who wrote for rocks magazine. Uh, yeah. Um, I had her as a guest, you know, to talk about stories from back in those days and kind of what she's into now. And, um, we did it at my house. Um, uh, you know, my wife was here, her husband was here and, um, had a little bite to eat. And then we did the interview and, um, as they were getting ready to leave, I actually went out and I gave her one of the 45 she gave me and I gave her some orange seed parade stuff. And I gave her your, another, a copy of the CD. She gave me a few of them. She just loved it. She was like, Oh my God, I love it. And they were listening to them, you know, on their way home and everything. And, um, so yeah, yeah, the, believe me, there's plenty of people out there, like I said, that you guys are, you know, a fond memory for, you know. So uh yeah, you know, I she hope- was always good to us. I mean, no complaints. Yeah. She mm-hmm. she treated us well for sure. Um mm-hmm. so yeah, I'm glad she still remembers us and she still digs the stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um it, it's it's good, you know, that's um I, I've had a lot of the bands, you know, even some that kind of predate us, um, on just to talk about, you know, the the old days and everything. It's just, you know, a lot of fun stories and everything. I really enjoy doing this. You know, I've had, um, let me see. I, I just had the fellow one. I haven't released it yet. Uh, Mike Tremonte, whose family owned the Bayou for 30 years. Oh, wow. He told me some great stories. I had Bud Becker who booked hammer jacks and was on the road with Rod Stewart and Alice Cooper. Um, wow. he's got some great stories. I've had face dancer DC star, um, it's it's great just hearing you know, about the clubs from back in those days and you know even guys that kind of predate us because they can tell us stuff that we don't know of which is you know really neat too um you know well i really appreciate you guys taking the time and everything and um like i said you guys were always one of my favorites and you know you, you know i always thought you know great band and good guys you know um it was always great to hang out and come see a show and everything and uh you know, I'm glad we've kind of kept in touch a little bit on Facebook over the years and that sort of thing too, you know, so i um, really happy for you. You know, this is great, great material. I tell you, you two are a sick rhythm section, man. Um, you know, just, you <laughs> well, know, you guys you. really, you. really put some great stuff down there and I'm a bass player myself, you know, and that uh, normally whenever I listen to something, you know, my ears go straight to the bass and drums, you know, and um, I can tell you guys have played, you know, you two kind of came in as a unit, didn't you? Yeah, we've we've been playing together since since high school. Um, I picked up a bass because Brian and another buddy of ours were starting a band. And like, hey, we need a bass player, and mm-hmm. so that's how I started playing. So yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah, we've always been in lockstep, and and I'm glad that it, it shows. And it, it, means it really to make you say that it, it really does. It really does, guys. Um, you know, just um. Yeah. I mean, you guys are just like a, you're like a unit, you know, and, um, that's the best way I can describe it, but I mean, it, it's just really, really well done. And, you know, again, and also, you know, you know, Bill, Joe, you know, you guys are just great. You know, that this is just, you know, you know, definitely, definitely something to be proud of. I think you guys have done here. So, uh, congratulations again. Um, do you want to give yourselves one more last plug? I know you just, you know, said the website if you just want to say that again before we wrap up red die number nine.com um that'll take you to Bandcamp. um if you go on any of your streaming services look for red die number nine everything will be on there um singles uh digital downloads it's all out there um get it now because we're halfway through writing the next record and uh, we're on schedule to put it out next year. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, save yeah. up the dollars. Yeah. Make sure you <laughs> follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook. Uh, you know, you'll hear what we're doing and uh, you know, the more people we know that are out there like us, the more that uh, we're more inspired to get out there and put out more stuff for you. 
Absolutely. And folks, remember, you know, we're getting close to the holiday season and, you know, it we have a great gift. It makes a great gift. I tell you what, you know, my guests on here have albums and books, shows, plays, you know, and they're small businesses. You know, people always talk about around the holidays, you know, shopping small, supporting, you know, the smaller shops, you know, because there are a lot of people out there that are artisans that make things and they have their own little shops and they have, you know, and again, you know, my guests, you know, like you guys, you know, you have your music that, that's out there. You have, you know, authors, you know, I have a number of authors on that have written books. You have people where you can order their music and you watch their movies and everything. Please support these folks, fellas, uh, folks, you know, it's, um, getting ready to be Christmas. And, you know, we want to remember that, you know, the people that put these, uh, you know, it's all fine and good to go on YouTube and everything and listen to your favorite music and everything. But, you know, just remember, you know, it, it takes, you know, a lot to put a book or a CD or something out. And, you know, remember our artists during this time of year, and I'll just kind of leave it at that. So guys, thank you all very much for being here. We appreciate your thank time. You. You know, it Thank was great to it. connect with you again. It's always good to hang out, Mike. Appreciate it. Yeah, Absolutely. Mike, thank you so much. Appreciate Abs it. And all the Thanks for work. having us. Absolutely. So um, yeah, I need to hear this new CD, so I have another excuse to take the long way home from the grocery store. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so I appreciate it, guys. All right, Enjoy. folks. This, thanks. Thanks. This has been Red Die number nine. You're listening to Foul Players Radio, and we'll see you next time, folks. <laughs>